Mark chapter 9, 43 to 46. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Strong words there from Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. Now, we know what hell is. Scripture makes hell pretty clear to us. When we read about hell in the Bible, we know what it's talking about. It refers to the place where the unsaved will go. Those that reject Jesus Christ and the power of Jesus Christ, the saving power of Jesus Christ, are going to hell. It's real and it's eternal and Holy Scripture tells us so. So a quick search for the word hell, using the Blue Letter Bible here, uh, shows us that hell is in. Scripture occurs 54 times in 54 verses in the KJV, starting from Deuteronomy verse 32, going right down through right down through to Revelation chapter 20 there. So the word hell appears 54 times from Deuteronomy right through to Revelation at the end of our Bible. Now I believe there's 23 verses in the New Testament. If my maths is correct, then that means there's 31 verses mentioning hell in the Old Testament. So it's pretty balanced. Hell being mentioned consistently through Scripture from the beginning of the Bible, pretty much from Deuteronomy, right through and evenly balanced. Comes up a lot in Scripture because it's important. It's important to understand why we need salvation. It's important to understand what hell is, why we need Jesus Christ. Now, that's in the KJV. Let's have a look at the New King James Version. Okay, the New King James Version, hell appears 32 times in 32 places, again from Deuteronomy. Down through to Second Peter. So we've actually lost so we've actually lost 22 verses with the word hell in it from the New King James Version. And what's happening here, I believe, is that the word hell, which is the word in English we understand, is being replaced by the word, the Greek word Hades in the New Testament and the Hebrew transliterated English word Sheol in the Old Testament. Okay, now anyone coming to those verses, maybe not understanding what Sheol or Hades is, maybe new people coming to the Bible, maybe newly saved people, or maybe people that have only been in the scripture for a short period of time, they're not necessarily going to understand those words. They may not necessarily understand how to find the meanings of those words in concordances 
or in biblical dictionaries which they may not have. Okay, so let's have a look at Hades. So if you do a Google search for Hades, you've got the Wikipedia there. That's the first thing that generally comes up in a Google search for any kind of word. And then obviously I've got it there in, I guess that's Portuguese, is it? Yeah, I, got, I get it coming up in English and Portuguese because I use both languages on this computer. But you'll get it come up in whichever language or languages you predominantly use. Then the very next thing then is Hades Greek mythology. And well, basically a whole lot of Greek mythology. Okay. Um, so anyone then clicking on the Wikipedia, for example, or you can go to these other sites, you're going to get the same, pretty much the same information, which basically says Hades was the ancient Greek Catholic god of the underworld, which eventually took his name. Now, does that sound anything like hell? To you? Does that sound like hell of the Bible to you? It doesn't to me, but we need to look at this in context. The realm of Hades, okay? Because we've got a whole load of Greek mythology here to go through first. But obviously that's not quite relevant to what Hades is supposed to mean in the Bible. Let's go to the realm of Hades. Okay, so the realm of Hades. In all the Greek myths, the realm of Hades is the misty and gloomy abode of the dead. Misty and gloomy. You'll notice there's no unquenchable fire here. Okay. Um, I could read on, but you can... There's not a lot of point because this really has nothing to do with the biblical word hell which has been replaced in many many English Bibles with the word Hades which really is not the same thing at all okay and again we can look at the Hebrew word or it's a transliterated Hebrew word into a kind of English word there Sheol which is the Old Testament usage of hell in the modern versions, not in the KJV. Um, again, you're going to be finding mythologies here. You've got the Sheol Wikipedia, Sheol Jewish Encyclopedia. What is Sheol? What is Hades? Meaning of biblical terms. For those that have mod modern versions, don't understand that it means hell. But you know, anyone coming to look at this is going to find the first thing they'll find is a Wikipedia. Sheol. In the Hebrew Bible. Now, look. Is a place of darkness to which all the dead go. Okay. And then if we read on, it says both the righteous and the unrighteous, regardless of the moral choices made in life, a place of stillness. A place of stillness and darkness cut off from life. Well, it doesn't actually stand, sound too bad, does it? Yeah. <laughs> a place of stillness and darkness it sounds like getting somewhere you could get a good night's sleep maybe okay the inhabitants of Sheol are the shades entities without personality or strength okay it goes on a little bit about uh, biblical usage here but it's very confusing here, okay? 
While the Old Testament writings appear to describe Sheol as the permanent place of the dead, in the Second Temple period, roughly 500 BC to 70 AD, a more diverse set of ideas developed. In some texts, Sheol is considered to be the home of both the righteous and the wicked, separated into res re uh, respective compartments. In others, it was considered a place of punishment. Okay, so you're not going to get much help from the Wikipedia, obviously. But this is the kind of confusion. This is the kind of confusion that the modern versions are going to lead you to. So 22 verses are missing the English word hell, the English word that we can understand out of the NKJV, the New King James. Let's go through the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation. There. 17 times. No, my maths isn't very good. Let's sing thing 20. Uh, that's 37. 37 of the 54 verses or the words hell have been changed in this modern translation uh, the NIV the NIV it now only appears 13 times in the Bible that's pretty close to an 80% reduction the word hell it would be about 70 or 75 percent maybe um, my maths isn't that good but what you'll notice here is it's gone from the Old Testament altogether and we can go on so on and so forth through the through the versions you can have a look the NASB you can go through these yourselves um, but it's definitely hugely reduced from the 54 times it occurs in the KJV. There are 13 times. And people say that the KJV is difficult to read. Well, <laughs> or that the modern versions, English versions, are easier to read. Well, they will be much easier to read if they're removing the word hell. So coming back to Mark chapter 9. Again, you'll notice here in the NIV, verses 44 and 46, which say, in the KJV say, Where their worm dieth not, and their fire is not quenched. Two times. Missing. Down in the footnotes, some manuscripts here include the words of verse 48. Okay, now, these two verses are missing completely from 29 different English versions. Let's have a look at what verse 48 says. We'll expand this search to include up to verse 48. So we've broadened that out from 43 to 48, the NIV, again, 44 and 46 are missing. We'll read through verse 47 and 48. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. So as you can see, the KJV has the complete passage here. I'll see NIV and many other versions have an incomplete passage with footnotes, which just adds to confusion. The footnotes that 
appear so frequently in the NIV and other versions are really leading people astray. People, especially people new to the Bible, often don't read or understand the footnotes. They are confusing. So if you want a Bible that's easy to understand, straightforward, then personally I would recommend the KJV. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.